again, just being a family, that's what we say when we break our huddle, we say family. So you got a new stadium coming, new uh, field house, and those type of things. So when you win, you know, those things start to come into play. But the, the proudest thing that I have is that we've signed 19 kids in three years. And that's the biggest thing I'm proud of, that we're trying to help these kids, not just in football, but in life. Big play right there by Markel Smith, but 19 kids. Did you hear that? In three years they've signed. This is a program, as we mentioned, that went winless just back in 2001. What a job Jesse Hicks has done. You know, he's got that college background. He knows what colleges look for. They've had lots of kids come through this program contributing at the next level. That's something else. Well, Jesse comes out, and he is a coach's coach. He not only is coaching them on the field, but he's coaching them off the field as well. He'll go down into the places where the kids don't belong, find them, and send them home. First down and 10, another big third down conversion, the second of this drive. And the ball is at the north side, 35, and there is Smith still on his feet. Bounces off one tackle, drives down to the 21, another first down, again a 14. And hit by Mitchell Bell there. And what a job, Coach Hicks is fired up. Man, he's out there on the field yelling at those guys, and Baldwin's got something working here. Well, it's also the offensive line is fired up. You know, it's one thing as an offensive lineman, you want to be able to give your back just a, enough of a seam so that he can do what he does best. And look at the power. Took five guys to bring him down. Darius Marshall, you get a look at his numbers today. 12 rushes, 53 yards, first down and 10. Spears looking to the air, firing, end zone, and it's going to be caught. Oh, they're going to wave him out. They're going to wave it off. Wayne Bonner on the receiving end of that one from Spears. Another well-thrown ball, but his foot just on the wide line. And Dave, give a lot of credit to uh, to the Baldwin offense. They, whatever uh, Coach Hicks said at halftime, whatever motivation <laughs> speech he gave, these guys have come out with like a new determination. And that's what a good head coach does. He's a motivator, gets those guys ready to play, puts them in situations to win football games. And he's big as they are. <laughs> Second and ten right here again. Marshall in the backfield, draw play, breaks one tackle. And dives forward. It's to the 20. Marcus Hill, the defensive tackle, was the guy in on that play. So another third down and long situation right here. Third and nine. And Baldwin has been able to convert a couple of big long third downs on this drive here. So let's see if they can get another. Definitely a good effort on uh, Marshall's part on that last play. He should have been stopped in the backfield and yet still picked up a few. Well, here we go, third down, nine, single back is Tommy Edwards throwing up top, fade pattern one-on-one. -on -one. They were looking to Marshall, but neither he nor Sanchez Clements, the corner, knew where the football was. And it landed in the end zone right there and completes a fourth down and nine, and decision time right here for Coach Hicks. What do you do here? I mean, you're, you're in too close really to punt the football. I don't know how much range Danny Barzabanian has. And it looks like right here the offense is going to stay on the football field and it looks like the Braves are going to go for it. Well, I like the call. It definitely it gives a big compliment to your offensive line to say, look, I'm putting it all on your shoulders right now. Is he going to make a break on this particular play? And if you turn it over, they've got to go 80 yards. So here we go, fourth down and on. Shotgun, Spears, firing, has a man five. Oh, in and out of the hands of Lane Bonner. A heartbreaker right there. You see the expression on Coach Jesse Hicks' face. And that was a drop for six right there. Wow. And that, that has to be heartbreaking. The big play, the big man, the big receiver just couldn't hold on to it. Take another look at it. Bonner 6'3", 185, just a junior. As you see Spears take a shot there, and that one right in his mitts, just unable to glove it. Well, you know, sometimes, Dave, you get so excited about catching it, you see the end zone before you actually look the ball in, and that's what receivers are taught, taught to do. Look the ball in before you start uh, heading for the end zone. So the ball will go over here, north side, on offense, eye formation from their own 20. 7.24 left third quarter. And the give goes to Byron Hunter. Got a big first half, but he's only got a yard right there. Nice job by Marcus Robinson, number 44, the linebacker. And we're talking about the linebacking core for Northside, but this Baldwin Braves linebacking core is also pretty stout. These guys come up here and make some plays. Big number 53, Dexter Reeves, is in the middle. Kevin Cooper into the lineup at wideout. 
for the Eagles. As you see, Hunter's numbers, 12 rushes, 108 and a touchdown here tonight so far. And still plenty of football left here for the senior. Second and 10. And a quick hitter this time. That is David Everett. And maybe a yard or so, and that's all for him. So it appears, Phil, that both defenses are really settling down here. Big number 45, Josh Ingram, the uh, senior, has been a monster this year. And he made that last play. 41 solo tackles, five sacks as well, and a guy chosen for the North-South All-Star game is number 45, Josh Ingram, over there on that uh, front for Baldwin. So a third down and eight right here. Big play for that Northside offense, equally big for that Baldwin defense, and whistles will blow this one dead. There's that yellow flag again. They have some more movement up front. Get a look at Conrad Nix there. Once again, movement up front on the offense. It's certainly been a reoccurring theme here tonight, so this third down and eight will become third and 13. And you see Coach Hicks trying to rally his defense here. Which Nick sends in the uh, play there with Kevin Cooper, number 14, who will check in at wideout. North side with two turnovers in that first half. They're actually plus two turnover margin throughout the season. They find themselves down two here tonight. Here's third and 13. Cooper and another flag comes flying in. May have a delay of game here. And that is indeed the call right there. Too much time to get that play in motion. Well, it's sort of like a reversal of, of the half. So in the first half, it seemed like Baldwin had more of a problem getting things together. Northside comes out the second half up 14 and just doesn't seem to be able to get it together right now. Northside established in 1964. Incidentally, that's a year after Baldwin last made their appearance in the semifinals. 1963 was the last semifinal appearance for the Braves. Of course, their first trip to the Georgia Dome. Here's third down and 18. Jacoby. Rodriguez looking to throw deep, has a man here, knocked away, great job by that secondary scenario, Milan. What a job right there by number five, Milan has come up big here a couple times tonight. And that ball was in the hands of Micaiah Jackson, but unable to glove it because Milan came over and looked like got a hand on it, swatted it away here. Take another look at it, great timing, wow. And we talk about, you know, having great defenses and Baldwin, we really don't give him a lot of credit as far as having a great defense, but that was just great speed, be able to read that and react and get to it that quick. Chris Bernard to punt it out of his own end zone. A little bit of a rush there. Boy, Baldwin nearly got their hands on that one. Wayne Bonner back deep will let it roll. It'll take a bit of an eagle roll down to the 42. Still rolling there. Finally down by Steven Lucas. So Baldwin does their job defensively, they get the football back. Well, this game can also be viewed live on the GPB internet site around the world at www.gpb.org. Just follow the links to connect to the game. Every game will also be archived and available later on the GPB website as well. That's www.gpb.org. So you're trying to say that if you wanted to right now, you could fire up your laptop and hear yep. you doing this game. Absolutely. I don't know if I want to or not, but oh, yeah, okay. that's, that's, that's an option. That fires me <laughs> up to know that. Live webcast and archive on gpb.org. So first down at 10 as Baldwin goes back to work offensively. Out of the eye formation there. Again, Marshall on the carry. And many around the state felt like if Marshall was able to get his hands on the football 25 to 30 times that the Baldwin offense had a pretty good shot here putting up some points. One of the challenges Baldwin's offensive line has is trying to get their pads lower than the defensive line of Northside. And that's very difficult when you're that much bigger. You've got to get down that much lower. Second down and seven. Look there at Jason Peacock, one of those big offensive linemen. And there is Darius Marshall, who has handled the bulk of the work tonight offensively. Spears going back to the air under pressure, looking long to Bonner. 
but he was covered up down at the 35. Give a lot of credit to the middle of that uh, north side defense. They just came with everything they had. Let's take a look at. You're going to look at the pressure from that north side defensive line. Big number 92, Sante Jones was one of the uh, guys who got in the face of Patrick Spears. So Spears now faced with a third down and seven. 4.30 to go here in quarter number three from the Georgia Dome. And Spears out of the shotgun, firing across the middle in and out of the uh, hands there. It looked like of Marshall, Brian Holder, number 28, the safety rolled over and made the uh, play there. As we talked about, Holder was the leading tackler on this team last year. And it certainly picked right up where he left off this season. Well, once again, it's that north side defense just letting you know, hey, Mr. Marshall, I'm going to be here. Just can't come across like that. Marshall has caught a few passes out of the uh, backfield this year. Rackley set to punt it away on fourth and seven from their own 45. Nick Bass again back deep. Trying to angle this one away. But Bass will field it at the 25 penalty marker. That one will come back as Bass takes it up across the 30 to the 32. But it looks like we're going to have a block in the uh, back here, and that's going to back the Eagles up inside their own 20. What a gutsy performance Nick Bass is. But one guy, Carico Hawkins, we just saw him, number 42. I think he's been down there on about every special teams tackle tonight. Well, you know, a lot of times coaches look for those guys. You might not be in there as a starter. You might not even get a lot of playing time. But the way you can break into some of these lineups is by performing well. On Indication is blocking it. Take another look at it right here again, Bass. We'll field the up on here. And you see right there in the uh, back. Looked like Mitchell Bell was the guilty party there. You know, that's the thing as a punt returner in this place. I mean, Dome, it's a little bit harder surface, even though this sprint turf's a little bit softer. It's got a little bit more cushion. You don't want to let the ball hit the ground in this place because it's liable to take a big bounce one way or the other. That time, it stayed right in front of Bass. Here's a long pass down the sideline, one-on-one. -on -one. Going to overshoot the intended target, Makaya Jackson. Good coverage by Baldwin there. She sees Jacoby Rodriguez taking back over on offense. Rashad Perry, the corner number 13. You see him there. Had him all the way. And you can tell by the way that he released that ball that he tried to put a little bit more air up under it to give him time to get right up under it, but uh, unfortunately, still overthrown. Northside, as we mentioned, averaging 32 points a game offensively. Lost to Statesboro in round two last year, 12-0. Statesboro again coming up here later on tonight against Griffin in the other half of this quad A semifinal equation. And that time Jacoby on the keeper there over the left side. Josh Ingram, number 45. Yeah, a guy with the hit there to bring up third down. You know, we talk about 19 signing scholarships off of this Baldwin program in the last few years. Five signing last year alone. And this is a program that has certainly earned their way here. Everybody said they, they're not supposed to be here. Well, they've earned their way here without a doubt. Well, you got to give Coach Jesse Hicks a lot of credit along with that entire school. Three and a half left, third period. Third down and seven right here. And off the option, Rodriguez will keep. And he will be close to the first down, but shy, it looks like, by maybe a yard, yard and a half. Dexter Reeves, Emmett Green combining for the hit. And it will be fourth down, and Northside will trot on the punt team. Baldwin's defense is definitely stepping up to the plate right now. And what they got to do is get this ball back, and they really got to put get those big heavies up front at some point. Just start pushing that uh, Northside D. And how about Emmett Green tonight? Number four, you see him there in the uh, left side of your picture. He has been on just about every tackle here tonight, it seems like. We've caught a lot of number four. Boots it away. Good high punt. Back to the 35 as Bonner takes it up across the 40. And will fall forward to the 43. So pretty good field position again for Baldwin on offense. Northside just plays very well with defense and on special teams. And everybody was down there to, toward the ball. And you know Bonner would love to have made something special happen, especially from that earlier drop pass to the end. 
23rd all-time meeting tonight between these two. Northside leads the series 16 to 6. Although Baldwin has won the only two playoff appearances between these two in 1986 and 1993. And of course that win in 93 was the last time that the Braves beat the Eagles. So we're trying to look to uh, get back to that winning mark here tonight with Tommy Edwards, number 34, good hard running right here. And Edwards hasn't had a lot of carries here tonight, but he's a guy that uh, is right there with Marshall. Typically you got that fullback that's it's a big bruiser that opens up the holes, but Edwards is actually a little bit smaller than Marshall. He just runs more straight ahead. Well, once again, if you're running behind the line, he's running behind. All you want to do is to get a gap to get a seam. Take a look at it. You're just trying to pick a gap. You're trying to find somewhere to just to make a cut. Unfortunately, only picked up a few yards. And once again, this offensive line, they still have the ability to wear down this defense. Second and four right here after a gain of six by Edwards. There's a hole right there. And Marshall is able to hit it. Just shy of the north side 45, but into Eagle territory. And that is a first down. Sam Robinson, the defensive end, making the stop. But again, the Braves are on the move here, and they still got plenty of time. 149 left here in quarter number three. At Eagle defense, I'm just watching them now. They all seem to just have, they still got that bounce. They're still moving around. Uh, I was watching the, the nose guard. He's just anticipating the snap of the ball. Two backs this time, Spears under center. And looking to throw. Has time throwing it up, little seam pass just beyond the outstretched fingertips of Darius Marshall. And they've thrown to Marshall a lot out of the backfield tonight. Once again, he's one of those, what's called those athletes. On the year, I think he had 21 receptions. We talk about the team strength for Baldwin being that offensive line, four returning starters, three over 330, as we talked about. The strength for Northside, as we set up top, knowing how to win. 91 and 15 since 1994, of course, the year that Conrad Nix came back to this program. Second down and 10. Give up the middle. There's a hole right there for Marshall, who will carry inside the Northside 40 down to the 37. And about eight or nine yards there on the quick hitter, so third and short coming up. You know what's impressive? Watch Big Hurt, 75. He's going downfield, making a block. 12, 15 yards downfield. Look at him. Wow. Just continuing. That's a man that weighs 340 pounds. <laughs> he was paired up with Stephen Lucas, the DB, and you know as a DB, you hate to see that coming at you. Here's third and one, and Baldwin will convert. Another third down, and that's one area that the Braves have seemed to have some success in today. And they haven't just had third and ones and third and twos. They've converted third and nine, third and 17, third and seven throughout the second half. Well, once again, Coach Hicks said, hey, this is what got me here, running behind these big guys, just letting them open holes when they can. One thing we haven't mentioned here tonight is Patrick Spears, the quarterback, actually played at Northside his freshman year. So he's got some friends over on that side of the ball. These guys know each other a little bit. You think he might know a little bit about that Northside defense? Yeah. Well, they're working on him right now here again on the 32. Spears looking to throw, has a man too tall for Latavius Reeves. The intended target, of course, we saw Spears hook up with Reeves early in the game on the first drive. But for the uh, most part, the north side defense has been able to keep them under control. Well, they are doing a good job. But, you know, I went back to take a look at the replay here. Spirit sets up. Had a, oh, a little knockdown at the end. They're letting them know they're coming. North side's <laughs> coming every time. I did a little math here real quick. I added up the uh, offensive line for a Baldwin. 1,490 pounds. Wow. Across the five. That's a lot of beef. You couldn't fit those guys in an elevator. They'd break the uh, weight limit there. I told you you said so. They'd have to ride it separately. Here's Marshall inside the 30. And it's going to be stopped just shy of the 26. And it will be third down upcoming here. Another third down coming up. Third and about five. As the clock winds down here and the final seconds tick off in this third period. And no other play will get run here, so that'll do it. 12 minutes left here inside the Georgia Dome. 14 0 north side, but Baldwin on the move when we return. Again, quad a semifinal action from the dome. North side up 14 0 over Baldwin as we get set for quarter number four inside the Georgia Dome. Again, the uh, first of two quad a semifinals on the night. Of course, Statesboro and Griffin coming up a little bit later on here tonight live 
on GPB, but first, Baldwin trailing, but on the move here. Just outside the north side, 25 to open up this final period, and that is Darius Marshall, who will take it down close to the 20, and Baldwin's on the move here. And I tell you what, Phil, they are certainly gaining momentum, and you can tell with this drive, they're gaining a lot of confidence as well, and that is key. Well, that's the whole thing about the momentum is getting those guys up front fired up to get get Marshall a hold of everything. You know, it's talking about Mar Maurice Hurt. You know, this guy has a 1,000 on his uh, SAT and has a 3.3 GPA. That's something Coach Hicks is really, really proud of. He really strives to get these guys focused. He says these guys are student athletes, and that's something that they require them to do is to definitely be focused on the academics. One of the most impressive stats about Patrick Spears alluding to that is a 3.89 GPA. Get right here. Marshall again right side punches it inside the 20. And you know when we were looking down, looking down the, uh, the the rosters of both these teams and reading the bios on these guys, there's a lot of guys for both Northside and Baldwin that volunteer in their community. They do volunteer work. And I think that says a lot for these high school kids to be not just great athletes, but great people. As we take a look at on the replay here. These guys have to do, you know, they're part of the community. And that's one thing. You, you see a lot of community uh, support for them. They come out here, they perform, and basically, like I said, there are a lot of great athletes out on the field, but they do a lot more than just on the field. Big second and eight right here again. One back trips up top. Receiver to the near side. Spears under center. And look at the throw. Finds a man across the middle there, in and out of the uh, hands there. Uh, Bonner, who is wanting the pass interference call there, but won't get it. It'll be third down and long here, third about eight. He almost threw it right in the hands of Deontay Jordan, number four from the north side. You know, we talked about uh, not calling Jordan's number a lot here tonight. He's the big play guy on defense, but in all honesty, Baldwin's offense really hasn't been able to get back to those linebackers that much. That defensive line is really tied up that front line for the most part. For the most part. But on this drive right here, it's the Braves that are starting to get a little bit of a push. So here we go, another third down right here. This is an area that the Baldwin offense has done pretty good in tonight. Fade pattern, corner of the end zone. Bonner is there, but out of bounds. And a nice job on the uh, coverage there by Sanchez Clements, the senior cornerback, who was able to stretch Bonner towards the uh, sideline there. He made the grab, but was out of bounds. Take another look at it, too. Wayne Barnard is an exceptional athlete at six foot three. He just goes up just a little bit out of bounds. But the thing is, a guy that good with that kind of talent, I got to go back at him a couple of times. And again, just a junior there in a six foot three, 185 pound frame. So fourth down and eight right here. And once again, that ball that offense will remain on the field here. Twins left and right, one back. And throwing a fade pattern up top. And are we going to have a flag there? It doesn't look like flag. They're going to say incidental contact there. Markel Smith was the intended target there. And Steven Lucas, the safety, was back there along with Brian Holder. So the ball will go over on downs, and Northside's defense holds. And, you know, we've talked about the uh, Eagles' defense this year, only averaging, allowing, giving up six points a game this year. They've got four shutouts to their credit as well. Baldwin missed a great opportunity right there. Still plenty of time left, though, 10.36, as we take another look at it here. And that's one of those that can go either way there. These officials have done a great job here tonight, though, without a doubt. They've been busy. So first down and 10, as you see the north side offense, first half total yards, 186. Second half, no yards on just six plays. Baldwin has had the football. But here's Byron Hunter, breaks one. Watch out, midfield, 40. Cuts it back inside, inside the 35. And just like that, Byron Hunter takes it down there as Rashad Perry and Emmett Green made the stop in the secondary. Hunter, again, was huge in the uh, first half there. And a big run right there of 48 yards. And he just gets to the outside and just turns on the speed. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. So that'll certainly change the stats here in a hurry. Again, no yards in this half. Up until that play. And once again, Hunter breaks a tackle. 20. Driving down to the 16 goes Byron Hunter. And just like that, the Eagles have grabbed the momentum back in this one as Green and Perry again combined for another stop. But not before another north side first down. And Dave up front north side is just opening up holes now. It's almost like fourth quarter. They can start to feel it a little bit. We, even though we got a lot of time to go. 
guys are really just executing. Well, they've scored no less than 14 points all season in three games. They've allowed no more than 14. As you see, Hunter again reading his blocks well. And we've got a timeout on the field here with 10.02 left in the football game. And Northside again trying to knock on the door. Well, Georgia's longest running weekly high school sports and academics program, Prep Sports Plus, returns January 13th and 14th with a one hour state cheerleading championship special. Each week, you'll meet some of Georgia's most successful student athletes, athletic programs, and much more. Again, that's Prep Sports Plus, returning January 13th and 14th exclusively on GPB. See, Dave, that's how I stay informed of what's going on in the high school ranks. Exactly. I, I, I check out Prep Sports Plus. And we encourage you to do the same. So first down and 10 right here after the run by Hunter, who lines back up again here with twins to the near side. And again, they give it to Hunter, who takes a shot as he crosses the 15 there. And the Braves with a, a pretty nice job defensively there. And that offensive line for Northside, they're just getting a surge. And Conrad Nix will take what, what you give them, two, three, four, five yards at a time. Dexter Reeves, the middle linebacker, with the stop there. Again, Northside has scored 14 points in their last two playoff games. Again, won 14-7 over Thomas County Central, won 14-2 over Rome. Lead at 14-0 here with nine and a half left. And as you see, David Everett, number 22, the fullback, cheated to the right. Misdirection play, Byron Hunter, five, Hunter, touchdown! What a run by Byron Hunter, who finds the end zone for the second time tonight. What a great play call by Northside. 14-yard touchdown. Puts it at 20-0, pinning the extra point. And this Eagle crowd is fired up. David Grayson looking to add the PAT here with 9.18 left. Lucas will hold it. And it's right down the pipe. So the lead is now 21-0 in favor of the Northside Eagles, who, as John Mint, uh, Nelson mentioned, are just one win away from breaking a school record with 14 wins. They've done 13 a couple of times in their history, but never 14. They could be well on their way to that tonight. As you see, what a great run by Byron Hunter. Now, what set that up is watch the guard here just pull and kick out the end. Now, we don't get a chance to see it, but bam, he just leaves it on a nice big scene. And Hunter does the rest. Chris Rory, number 77, the uh, big guy in there, the senior guard pulling there with the uh, kick out. There's no one close to him. Here's another angle right here. Great read, too, by Hunter, who started the play out to the right side, came back to the left and found some daylight. And Hunter, as we mentioned again, in the end zone for the second time tonight. Four plays, 81 yards in a minute 18. That's a quick strike right there by the Northside Eagles. What a job tonight by that young man right there. Byron Hunter had a big first half and has picked it back up here in the fourth quarter. So Bernard boots it away. Short kick this time. Good is just inside the 20 by Marshall, and he has hit and dropped it to 25. And one area that we haven't talked a lot about tonight is special teams. That was number 29, Kyle James, making the uh, hit there. And Northside has certainly had great coverage because this is a, a Baldwin team that's broken a couple long kickoffs this year. Well, we talked about that before. We talked about their defense. But one of the things that we really need to look at is some of these guys, like I said, they're on special teams. You, you go out there and make a big hit like that, a coach takes notice of that, getting more of an opportunity to play. Now the Baldwin offense will go back to work here with 9-14 left in the ball game. In that huddle right there, uh, you just saw Deontay uh, Jordan. He was really just firing up that north side defense. And the winner of this one takes on the Griffin Statesboro winner. That one later on tonight right here on GPB looking possibly halfback pass. Marshall couldn't find anyone though, so tucked it and ran it, but lost two yards. And Dave, I'm not so sure that ball and that momentum, they're starting, to, they're starting to walk a little bit more. 
And it looks like Northside just keeps on, got that same little swagger, that, that same little bounce they've had. With Deontay Jordan just calling the plays, keeping those guys fired up. Antoine Rice made that last tackle. He had an interception last week, and that went over Rome. Patrick Spears again will work out of the shotgun this time on second down and 12. North side with a little bit of pressure, gets a hand in the face, looking long, and they've got a completion. Wayne Bonner, no, Latavius Reeves, number 36, down to the north side, 40. And we talked about the deep ball from Spears. He's got a great touch on it, and again, laid another one right in the breadbasket. And the thing is, Dave, sometimes you just need that one play. You need something to spark you. Nice throw downfield. Look at that nice, pass. Nice catch. Right in your living room right there. Now let's see if they can capitalize on it. Momentum's going their way. So first and 10 from the north side, 40. Twins left and right again. Spears working out of the shotgun. Another deep pass throwing long. has got a man there, and it's going to be caught. Inside the 10, a flag comes flying down. It could be pass interference, but that's Dean Taylor, the sophomore wideout who went up and got that one. Wow. Great catch. Let's take a look at it. Spears with a nice touch on the ball. But this is just a great catch, great athletic catch. Keeps his eyes on the ball. Comes down with it with two hands. Fantastic. He had decent coverage on him. Looks like they're going to call it on Leslie Jordan. As you can see, Jordan playing the man and not the ball there. Got flagged, but again, it will be pretty much first and goal anyway from the eight after an excellent catch by Taylor, just a sophomore. We're going to look at Markel Smith, number 11, who checks in the lineup. Add Watt out, also the backup quarterback. And has taken some snaps this year and some movement over on the left side of that offensive line. Looked like big Jason Peacock may have jumped early. And our referee tonight is Mr. Chip Huffman. Start of the snap. Ball start. On the offense. First down. Dean Taylor, the man who caught that last pass, limping off the field there. And you see the fans in the house here tonight from Northside High School. The Blue End Marching Band doing a great job. And there you get a look at Taylor hobbling over on the far sideline there. As you see the uh, Baldwin Braves Two possessions in the uh, red zone today. No touchdowns, no field goals. They'd love to change that right here. They definitely would. So still first and goal, but from the 13, Spears looking to throw. Throws it back the other way, intended for Latavius Reeves. But a little too tall there. Reeves unable to catch up to that one. Sanchez Clements was in the area for Northside. They give Northside a, a lot of credit up front. They're definitely putting a lot of pressure on that ball went off the offensive line. Of course, a whole another day of action tomorrow. We've had some great games here this afternoon. I've seen some good football as always. Of course, nine years of coverage uh, right here on GPB. Inside the Georgia Dome. Again, the 23rd meeting tonight between these two teams, the first since 2001. Braves on the move, trying to score. Uh oh over the head of Spears, who will just fall on it right there. Ball still loose, and Northside has recovered. They will mark him down back at the 39, but a big recovery right there by Eric Mann's number 49, and man, have we called his number a lot today. And if you just take a look at uh, Robert Crawford getting the ball off the ground, his expression said it all. Here you see it. Just over his head. Spears just trying to fall on this football, but took a shot from behind. They're unable to field it cleanly, and Manns was right there. You can see the knee was clearly down, but Manns does recover the football there. He has certainly been big. He's got two recovered fumbles heading into that one, so three on the year now. As we mentioned, he's got a knack for being around the football. And here's a big run by David Everett, it looks like, number 22, who lined up at tailback that time. And a big run right there up to the 49, just shy of the midfield stripe. Northside just seems to be getting stronger as the game goes on. Just take a look at this replay. They're just busting through holes. These guys have got the momentum right now. They're pretty fired up. 
as you get a look at Everett, number 22. We'll go back to the fullback spot here. Again, first and ten. Ball right at midfield. And this time back to Hunter. He's got a crease. Watch out. 35, 30. Still on his feet. Up in it. But a big gain right there of about 23 yards. And Hunter adds to his total. Emmett Green able to get him down in the uh, secondary there as Hunter collided with teammate Nick Johnson, the receiver. As you see the uh, tail end of it there, and I'll tell you what, Byron Hunter's had a huge game. Well, you got a lot of the uh, Baldwin defensive line on roller skates. I mean, the north side off, uh, offense is getting up into the chest and just moving them out the way. Hunter again, as we mentioned, 120 average per game and a little bit more room over there. This is Everett. Bounces off of one tackle. What a run right there for David Everett. Wow. The senior running back Carries it in from 22 yards out. And the Eagles of Northside out of Warner Robins build to that lead. What a tremendous drive by that Northside offense. Give Coach Nix a lot of credit. We've talked about Byron Hunter, but Everett again. The misdirection play there was able to break it outside. Great read. These running backs really find the daylight. David Grayson, the sophomore kicker, to try to make it four for four tonight, and he does so right down the middle. So 6-17 left in the ball game, and Northside with a commanding 28-0 lead. As we take another look at it right here, again into your living room, David Everett, great cut right there, and it was a foot race. And that Northside North offensive line, they just put a helmet on everybody. Nice kick out block there. And Everett does most of the work on his own. Whoop, excuse me. <laughs> Tremendous effort. You know, we talked about being a key here, as you see it again. Wearing down who, wearing down who. You know, we thought with Baldwin's offensive line having those big guys, you know, leaning on you as a defensive lineman that maybe they'd wear north side down a little bit, but that hadn't been the case. Again, three plays, 60 yards, and under a minute. Everett, number 22, with a 22-yard touchdown run. There's all smiles here in this fourth quarter. We talk about having that big size on one side, but at the same time, that big size is trying to keep up with all that speed on the north side defense. So the Eagles will boot it away here. As you see, the Baldwin Braves looking on here, trying to make something happen on offense once they get this football back with 6-17. It's a high but fairly short kick bobbled at the 20. Picked up. A little bit of room there at the 25. Bounces off Latavius Reeves. Watch out. Wow, nearly busted that thing outside. If he could have turned the corner, he had all kinds of room over there. But credit the Eagles special teams again for sticking with the play. Once again, 11 men headed to the ball. These guys are relentless. They don't give up. Both teams starting two and three, respectively, in the uh, preseason there. Baldwin, of course, though, fell out after losing three of their first five games. But bounced back to close out the season. And they've got an eight-game winning streak, basically, heading in here tonight in jeopardy. Spears will work out of the shotgun in the hurry-up offense. Looking, firing, deep sideline. He's got Bonner, 35, makes a move. And will fall forward to the 37, Brian Holder. The safety on the tackle, and again, Bonner, as we talked about, the big basketball players got a great vertical, over 21 yards of catch on the uh, season there, and six touchdowns. And he is a key for you right now to get the ball into his hands. He's a playmaker. He can make things happen. And right now, they need some things to happen. Good rangy kid, six foot three. You know one thing I've noticed tonight about this horse side defense, they don't miss too many tackles. No, These guys don't. have been great one on one tonight. Well, they don't miss tackles, and they all get to the ball. One defensive touchdown on the year for Northside. Here's a quick pass right here, dropped. And intended for Marshall out in the flat there. So it will be third down at about a yard here. It was second and one after that last play. As you see Coach Jesse Hicks looking on. He was actually played on the number one defense in the nation at Albany State. So he knows a little something about defense, that's for sure. And he certainly put together a pretty good offense here as well. Just uh, held out of the end zone here tonight, but they've been able to move the football. They've had some situations where they had to go for it inside the red zone there, and, and 0 for 3 in the red zone is just not going to get it done. 
Not against the, the, the speed of this north side team. Third down and yard right here. They just want to get the first down, throw it over the middle, complete. Marshall breaks a tackle, gets a block. Midfield in to north side territory. Inside the 40 down to the 39, nicely executed play right there. Leslie Jordan, the corner, making the uh, hit. Brian Holder, the uh, safety, getting up slowly. Back down at the other 35. And great effort by Marshall. Got hit right there. Should have been down. But if you don't wrap up, you're not going to grab him. And that was Holder who made that initial hit. Still down on the uh, turf here. Crossing route right here. They like to throw that to Bonner, but it was Marshall that time on the receiving end, and from there it was speed. And watch Bonner deliver a lick right here. Boom. You like a, you like a bag that can do that. <laughs> Bonner is up as you see Marshall's numbers here tonight. 23 rushes, 118 yards. So, again, another strong night for the junior running back from Baldwin High School. And again, the Braves are on the move. As you see Holder off on his own power. Doesn't appear to be too serious there. As you see some of the fans in the house here tonight. So Spears will work out of the shotgun from the Eagle 39. And that time, take your pick. Two or three guys moved. Looked like maybe the center was supposed to snap the, uh, the ball there and didn't. Everybody else was on the same page, it looked like, maybe. That happens every, every now and then. Yeah. Two leaders in the uh, house firing up the uh, crowd here. Again, 5.05 left in this one. Northside, of course, showing why they're number one, looking to go to a perfect 14-0 and advance to the state championship next Friday right here on GPB against the winner of the later game here tonight between Griffin and Statesboro. That one batted down. Sam Robinson, number 30, the guy we focused on from the beginning. Has played a heck of a ball game here and was able to bat that one down. And Sam read that all the way. Lined up on the outside, putting outside pressure, and just as it, the ball was released, he just put that big mid up. To look at Robinson, who's also Complimented well, as we talked about, my man's the other defensive end. And that front four has really gotten it done here tonight for Northside. Second down and 15 right here. Spears looking to throw once again. Complete. Batavius Reeves, 30. And down to the 27. Nice move right there by Reeves. Charles McKenzie, the junior DB, had to bring him down there. But a big gain and a first down. You know, Baldwin keeps finding these little flashes of greatness, and they keep doing some good things here. They just got to keep it up. They can't let their heads drop right about now. They've got momentum. They're moving. These guys have to get their confidence. Reeves again, that 90-yard kickoff return last week against Marist. Has been big all season long. Here's first and 10. Throwing it long towards the end zone. has got a man there. Touchdown. Wayne Bonner, the junior wideout, gets his hands on one and makes it pay off. If I recall correctly, didn't I say that a little while ago? <laughs> that man has to touch the football. A great effort by Bonner. Bonner again with a big time reception right there. He's got a look of disappointment on his face because he knows his team's still trailing and it doesn't do a lot of good. Good concentration, especially having a defender right there in your face. Take your hats off though to Bonner. A great catch right there. Great concentration. And Danny Barzabanian, the junior place kicker, will try to add the PAT here. And gets it just inside that left up right there. So 28 to 7 with 431 left in credit. This Baldwin Brace football team for fighting right to the end. Well, just talking to Coach Hicks, he's not going to let these guys give up as we take another look at that great catch by Bonner. But Coach, Coach Hicks is a motivator. He'll, he'll get these guys on here and realize that. Until the clock hits zero, then we just got to keep playing. Leslie Jordan, the DB on the play. As you see, the Braves drive there. Sixth place, 72 yards. A minute 46 is all off the clock there. And again, 27-yard reception for Bonner from Spears. So a quick strike there for the Baldwin offense. As you see, Coach Jesse Hicks there. And what a job he's done to take this team to the Dome in four short years. A playoff team each of his first four years at Baldwin. Met him before the game tonight. He's a class act. 
you know, one of the things that he did, uh, we talked about Maurice Hurt, who was a uh, senior this year, but he was the first junior ever named captain of a Baldwin football team. And, and Coach Hicks said it was because of his leadership, you know, that he saw this guy was very mature and the guys rallied around him. I think that's a great compliment for uh, the big Hurt. Was headed on to the next level, and not only that, he's going to graduate in December and enroll at the University of Florida early to go ahead and start classes. And I think that says a lot about a guy that's got the, the athletics and the academics. So an onside kick right here by Baldwin. They get the bounce. And that one will go out of bounds, it looks like. So it will be north side football. Mitchell Bell knocked it away there. 4.30 left of the ball game. Let's go ahead and throw it on down to the sideline. John Nelson, what do you got? Well, you sit here and you see two eagles kind of going at it. Look at the darker build eagle, the one that is brown. That is Hannah Carswell, and she is a 10th grader at Northside. And you know how they say things are all in the family? Well, mascots are all in her family. Her parents, Robert and Rebecca, have spent time as Smokey the Bear. Her dad has also been Woodsy the Owl and the GMC Bulldog. She's got the job this year, but she's going to have to audition to keep it next year. <laughs> It runs in the family. You know, we talked about that on the football field, but it also happens with the uh, mascots as well there. Again, Hannah Carswell doing an excellent job as the uh, north side eagle. Prior to snap, ball start on the offense. First down. So the Eagles take back over here. As you see the Blue End marching band in the house. Of course, the Baldwin High marching band on a Thanksgiving Day parade up in Philadelphia, unable to attend here tonight. So no battle of the uh, the bands here in this first quad-A semifinal of the evening. Certainly say hi to all those folks, though, and the uh, Baldwin defense making a big stop right there. You know, it seems like in the, in the playoffs over the last few years, the key has been the team that beats Rome. Uh, in 2004, Warner Robins beat Rome in the quarterfinals, won the state championship. Thompson won it in 2002, won the state championship. Statesboro in 2001, they won the state championship. The only team to, to beat Rome in the playoffs and not win the state championship was North Forsyth back in 2003. Of course, Rome with a very good football program. They unable to uh, get here, though, after running up against this very north side Eagle program that has certainly flourished and has been one of the top programs throughout the state of Georgia the last decade. So based upon what you just read to me, does that mean that the next person to win the state championship would be Northside? Possibly, but you got to think Griffin and Griffin and or Statesboro, they're going to be thinking, thinking differently there. Statesboro, of course, last year's Quad A runner-up falling to Warner Robins in the state championship game there. Statesboro trying to get back to that point. That one later on tonight right here live on GPD. This is game four of ten right here this weekend. We've enjoyed having you. Good football game here. Northside has been able to generate more offense. They'll put up some points here. Baldwin's been able to move the football. There's a fingertip grab by David Everett up across the 40, up to the 43. And there's another young man right there that's gotten it done on the ground and now in the air with a big reception. And what a great catch, one-handed. Take a look at it again. Coming right at you. Stick that big mid out, grab it. One hand. Good wow. concentration, just following the ball in, pull it in. Great camera work there once again along the uh, sideline. Kobe Rodriguez with the completion there. And it looks like we've got a timeout on the field here. As you see, David Everett, guy who has also gotten it done. You know, we talk a lot about Byron Hunter, and deservedly so, but uh, I'll tell you what, he's complimented well by Everett here, the senior running back who's also been known to catch a few passes out of the backfield. Six receptions on the year coming into this game. These guys like to spread the football around. As we talked about, typically a, a running football team, but I, I've been surprised with the amount of passes they've thrown here this evening. Well, I think Coach Nix came in with a game plan and uh, it seems to have executed it well, especially on defense. It's, that's exactly what Northside is known for, but the offense has done a tremendous job tonight. Jackson, Bass, Armstrong, and Cooper. The four main targets for Northside have combined for over 64 catches on the year. That almost sounds like a law firm. <laughs> it does. <laughs> but it will be fourth down despite that catch. Of course, Northside backed up here, so they will punt the football away. A little bit of a rush.
rush there, but able to get it out. Bonner will let it roll. He'll take a bit of a north side bounce inside the 20. And will be down at the 17. Mario Armstrong, number 25 for Northside, has been one of those big play receivers this year. He's also played a big part on special teams, and so Patrick Spears will go to work. Again, Spears, as we talked about, played his freshman year at Northside High School. Friends with some of those guys over there. Does a lot of volunteer work in Milledgeville, and as we talked about, 3.89 GPA. He also gets it done in the classroom. Considered undersized, not a very big quarterback that can throw that deep ball well, as we've seen here tonight. Well, this would be a good time to throw one. First and 10, Spears firing across the middle, in and out of the hands there of Bonner. That's his second drop of the night. Of course, he's had some nice catches here. Of course, he had that touchdown catch a while ago, but unable to hang on to that one. And it's got to be frustrating for a go-to receiver to be able to not bring that ball in. You mentioned a couple drops tonight. You know he just wants to do well because that's just how this kid is. Of course, north side, their defense, as we talked about, four shutouts this year. They won't shut out Baldwin tonight. The Braves, again, with that touchdown on their last drive, have it here, 237. Spears, again, working out of the shotgun on second and 10. Fires, and a nice attempt there. It'll fall incomplete, though. Latavius Reeves with a, a good effort, unable to glove it. And north side's defensive line continuing to just push back that offensive line of Baldwin. I think the thing that's, that really jumps out about Northside is something that uh, John alluded to earlier as we talked about. Eight consecutive 10, 10 plus win seasons. That's remarkable when you think about it, when you put that in perspective, to think that every year these guys for the past eight years, almost a decade, have won at least 10 games. There's, I don't know if there's another program in the state of Georgia that can say that. Well, you got to give a lot of credit to uh, that coaching staff down at Northside. Spears on third and 10 right here. Pressure takes a hit off the uh, fingertips of Bonner, and it will be fourth down right here. Spears took a pretty good little shot back there. And so on will come the punt team here with 2.25 left. Take another look at it. And I believe that was Manns. Yep. Yep, that's the man. Big number 49, Eric Manns, the senior. Had that fumble recovery. Has made plenty of tackles here. Throughout the night, Kevin Rackley will punt. North side will leave their defense on the field. Won't drop anybody back deep. Anticipating a possible fake right there, but Rackley does boot it away. And it'll be down at the 48. And North side will go back to work. There's Carson Hill, another guy that we've talked about. One of the top three corners in the state. Number 10. Darian Barnes, number 43. And there you get a look. The signs are written out here. Number one, Northside Eagles. I think they're starting to feel it a they're little bit. Starting to feel it without a doubt here. <laughs> they're going to look at Jacoby Rodriguez, the starting quarterback who has led that offense throughout the year. An eye formation right here. Northside just looking to pound the football here and run out the rest of the clock. Give straight ahead. That's Hunter who takes it into Baldwin territory and a gain of four yards right there. Marcus Robinson with the uh, tackle. And Northside looking to move on to that state championship game next Friday night. Well, give credit to uh, that Northside offense, uh, offense and defense. I mean, these guys, they still playing. I mean, this is like you, you could easily just start walking and, you know, causing their team some, some problems. But these guys are great character. And you got to give uh, Coach Nick a uh, uh, hats off. Second and six right here. The give is back to Hunter. He's got the first down and pushes one of his own men out of the way there at the tail end of that play down to the 41. That'll be another first down. And they can pretty much take a knee from here. Talk about how strong, you know, we talk about how fast he is, but Hunter's pretty powerful too. He's take a look at the replay, just bust through the line, gets a nice kick out, and just runs over the offensive <laughs> tackle. Hey, if you're in the way, you got to move. There you go. Well, of course, this is a Northside offense that rushed for over 400 yards in their first game of the season. As you see, Hunter's numbers, 24 for 231 and two touchdowns. Wow. A tremendous night for the young man. Of course, that 400-yard rushing night 
was against Peach County, who, of course, is a AAA semifinalist. And Rodriguez will take a knee here as we go under a minute. And the celebration is on on the uh, Northside Eagles sideline here as they look to close it out 28-7 in front of the faithful who have made the trip up from Warner Robins. And there you get a look, Northside High Eagles number one, which they have pretty much been most of the uh, season. They've averaged 32 points a game offensively. They'll fall just shy of that tonight, but right around that defensive average, six or seven, as Rodriguez takes another knee and they won't have to snap it again. So what a job here and what a night for the Northside Eagles who will improve to 14-0 as they step into next week's state championship ranked as the number one team, top team in Quad A in the state of Georgia. Well, congratulations to Coach Nix and that, those, those Eagles played a tremendous ball game. And I mean, what a great defensive effort those guys. Taking that, that big ball one offensive line and just not allowing them to do anything. 28-7 the final. The Northside Eagles again in next week's state championship. The Baldwin Braves again will end their season at 10 and four overall. What a year for Coach Jesse Hicks and the Braves generating a lot of excitement in Milledgeville. The mighty Braves as they're called throughout town but falling a little bit short here tonight. Will end their season inside the Georgia Dome here in the semifinals. What a ball game again. Northside getting 230 plus yards from Byron Hunter and that was basically the key in this one right here. Again that offensive line getting a great push and able to block out a lot of those great blocking schemes that we saw there that we talked about. Let's go ahead and take a timeout. Northside Eagles, 28-7 winners over the Baldwin Braves in the first of two quad A semifinals on the night. Let's throw it downstairs to John Nelson standing by with the winning coach. Here with Coach Nick's first question. You're playing for a state championship, we, how's we, it feel? We certainly are, and I'd like to say it's great to be a Northside Eagle. I want to praise God for all that he's done for us this year. These guys have worked really hard, and I just uh, very humbly thank him, and uh, just really, really super proud of our guys tonight. We've had a lot of uh, adversity, you know, a lot of guys injured, a lot of people don't know that, and we don't talk about it a lot, but a lot of guys have just kept sucking it up and playing, and we got a great group of guys, and I'm uh, real proud of them there in that fourth quarter. We came back and had to get something going. We didn't uh, do very well there in the third quarter, so uh, really proud of our uh, way our offense stepped up, made some big plays, you know, and uh, uh, just really, really proud of them. Let's talk about that line play. They were blowing some holes for Byron tonight in fourth quarter. Did, did a great job. Uh, man, uh, you know, excellent blocking there at times, and, you know, but those guys that they were playing against are not, you know, little boys either. You know, they're men, full-grown men, and I just congratulate our guys on the, the effort they did, and, you know, and then that's sort of the North side, you know, we're going to get physical with you and hopefully we'll uh, stay in there and go with, you know, jaw to jaw type, you know, football with you. And let's talk about that jaw to jaw football on defense. They were pretty tough. Well, it was. Again, that sort of shows that, you know, some of our injury situations and all that were a little bit depleted in the secondary, some, and the guys just, you know, hung in there. We had a lot of guys playing that. You know, uh, little Leslie Jordan, a little 10th grader that, uh, you know, he's not but about 5'7", 32, did a great job for us. A lot of guys stepped up and all, and I give Coach Hicks and his staff credit. It's a great tribute to his guys for being here tonight. People don't understand what they've done to accomplish the feat that they did just being here. And, of course, I'm glad that we won, certainly, but uh, they did a great job getting here. Well, we'll see you next week. Congratulations, okay, Conrad Hicks. He gets the first. He is going to have one of the dates next Friday night. We'll figure it out who his opponent's going to be coming up next. We'll send it back upstairs. All right, Coach Nix and his Eagles victorious headed to the state championship. That's it for us. For Phil Proctor, John Nelson, I'm Dave Garner saying so long, everybody. More coming up from the Dome later on here tonight. Stay with us. The High School Association's football semifinals has been provided in part by... Georgia's Electric Membership Corporations. Wachovia. The International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, IBEW Local 613 Atlanta. Georgia's Dodge Dealers. The Atlanta Journal-Constitution.
and by viewers like you.